Okay guys, more logic tips, and in this one we're looking at the nudge palette, which is a really useful tool for helping you to get grooves together. Okay, you can do other things, but it's really good for getting grooves together. Uh, here I've got a simple Apple drum loop, right there, and then in this one bar region below it, I've got a simple three note chord using a house organ sound, right? And the three note chord is on the first beat of the bar, right? And I've got a one bar cycle loop around the whole thing. So a simple three note chord on the first beat of the bar. Okay, now Logic needs to be in advanced mode, which you should know how to do. Logic main menu, preferences, general. That brings up your preferences box. Go to advanced and tick show advanced tools. Then Logic is in, in advanced mode. And when it's in advanced mode, you then have this extra icon here in this cluster of icons. That one next to the I for inspector column. This one, when you mouse over it, it says toolbar. Click it and it drops the toolbar down. Now the toolbar contains simple icons that represent edit commands. And the idea is you drop the toolbar down, click on one of these icons to perform a common edit command instead of having to search for it in the menus. And you can right click on this toolbar and customize it to add or take away ed different edit commands that you want to be visible. But in the middle of the toolbar is the nudge palette here, right? It's got a left and right arrow to nudge the content left or right, forward or backwards, and in the middle is the nudge value. Now you can set your nudge value to bar, beat, division. The division in logic by default is set to sixteenths. If you look at the grid, when you're zoomed in, you've got sixteenth lines in the arrange area and sixteenth lines in piano edit, right? So division is by default sixteenths. Then you've got some tick values, and then you've got actual note values. Whole, half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, thirty-second, and sixty-fourths, and triplet versions of those, right? So I'm going to set it to sixteenths. All right. And now I just select the three chord, the three note chord, currently on the first beat of the bar, and I can kick it around. Forward by sixteenths, nudge, 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 or back in time by sixteenths. And each time I kick it I get a different chord position which gives me a different vibe. On beat like it is now on the first beat of the bar. Yeah, or on a beat on an eighth in the middle of a quarter beat like that. Or an off beat position, second sixteenth or fourth sixteenth in a quarter beat. Okay, that's an off beat on the second sixteenth. And that's an off beat on the fourth sixteenth. So now obviously you're going to have other music going on, there'll be other instruments, bass, etc. playing, maybe a vocal lick, and just this one chord positioned at different positions in the bar creates that one chord accent with different offbeat or onbeat vibes in different positions along the bar relative to the rest of the music. And just kicking it around can change the whole groove, you know what I mean, in, in terms of how that accented chord, just that one chord, where it triggers. You know what I mean? Just on the last sixteenth in the bar, it gives that that accent lick a different vibe, right? To if, for example, it's there in the third bar uh, beat on the middle eighth in in the middle of that quarter beat. You know what I mean? So you can just nudge a single chord around and and change the whole accent of that chord in in the one bar to change the whole vibe of the groove, right? Now, obviously, you can do this with more than one chord, right? When you have two chords in a kind of housey vibe uh, one bar like this, it kind of works nicely to have one of the chords on a bit on a on beat position. That's a quarter beat or an eighth in the middle of a quarter beat, and the second chord in an off beat position. That's the second sixteenth or fourth sixteenth in a in a beat. So if I copy this over and then change this chord to a variation. I've got two chords now. 
Now there they are, each on a quarter beat, a quarter beat apart. They're both on a beat, on a an on beat position. But if I move on to an off beat position on a second sixteenth or a fourth sixteenth, we get a different vibe. Or the second sixteenth position in a beat. And then I can get both chords, one on an on an on beat position, one on an off beat position, and kick the two chords around um, like this. Now this is on an on beat this is sorry on an off beat position, second sixteenth in that quarter beat. This is on an on beat position in the middle eighth in the middle of that quarter beat, the third sixteenth. So off beat, on beat. Ba -ba -da -ba. Ah. And there's an echo on here. There's a little eighth delay on here, so we get a little eighth delay after each chord, um, which helps accent the um, on and off beat. Sorry, the off and on beat positions even more. Let's kick it this way again. And now this is on an on beat, the eighth in the middle of the first quarter beat, and this is in an off beat, the last sixteenth in the second beat. So let's say I think, yeah, I like it like that. So then I'll copy this chord off and just kick this one around relative to these two that I, I like them in that position. You know, and I might think, yeah, you know what, I like it like that. Or let's take these two, and we'll keep this one in its offbeat position there, second sixteenth in this second quarter beat, and move these two. Now they're also on an offbeat position. Not quite the same, right? Move to both to an on beat position, they're both on a quarter beat now. And that kind of works again. And then we could say, well let's try moving that one chord. Okay, so there I've arrived at my my lick by just kicking chords around. Yeah, it's it's, it's a very creative tool. This this uh, nudge palette, right? So I've got my little chord sequence. I've got the chords are all in the position now to give me an off beat, an off beat, and an on beat. And then I'm going to add a little extra lick note in just before this chord to give me a little little lick note on the root note of the chord there. Yeah, it's a very, very, very powerful tool, this. We're getting ideas together. So there's the chords in their position I've arrived at by nudging them around, copying, nudging two around, then going, oh, I quite like the position of two of them, nudging another one around, uh, one of the three to change it, you know what I mean? Um, so I've got my chord sequence now, my chord lick, in the positions I want it, but I can also kick the whole region around. Just select the region instead of the notes in piano edit just click and select the region so the region is selected and this is the active edit window and i can kick the region around so i can now kick the three chords in their positions relative to each other i can kick them backwards and forwards in time which changes the position of the three chords relative to each other relative to the drums they'll keep their positions relative to each other but i'm moving the whole sequence forward or back by 16 so let's move it that way and listen That's completely different to that. And that's different again. Yeah, so I think, right, actually, I, I like that. So I've kicked this entire three chord lick back in time to 16th. So we'll put this back where it was. So we keep the original chord positions in one bar and then we'll copy that bar over so we've got two bars and then the second bar with the three chords in we'll kick it back in time by two sixteenths so that will be as it was originally and this will be the variation
see what I mean? It's a, it's a really powerful but simple tool. And in this instance, I've shown you, you know, kicking a single chord around, adding in a second chord, kicking the two chords around relative to each other, and then adding in a third chord, kicking that around to get a third chord relative to the other two, and then when you get something you like, maybe changing one of the chords, etc. I've just shown you this with simple chords for a housey type thing. But you can be kicking around a note that's triggering a sample loop, for example, and as you kick it forward or backwards in, in a 16th position, it will trigger the loop later or earlier, on and on or off beat position. So when the loop triggers back, at those different positions it's got a different timing so it could be you're changing the timing of a triggering of a loop or a timing of a drum a percussion pattern over a drum beat so the the drums take different offbeat positions or on beat positions relative to the main beat it's a really really powerful but simple tool for getting grooves together very very cool and um, i hope you find that useful